Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Everyone, welcome to the show. So 29 year old January 6 defendant Brandon Fellows has been on trial or he was on trial and it was a Trump train wreck um, to refresh your memory about who this guy is. You guys are going to remember him. Um, he was living in an abandoned school bus when he took part in the Capitol attack because, you know, Trump was so much better for the economy. Um, and then on January 6th, he was seen on video. He was inside of Jeff Merkley's office. He was smoking weed. He had a red wig on. He also filed a ton of motions in his case, and he demanded that he be allowed to represent himself at the trial. And Fellows has been in prison since June of 2021 because he violated his bond conditions in this case in a couple of ways. So first, he called the mother of his probation officer, seemingly to try to intimidate the probation officer. And then he violated a previous protection order that was against him by reaching out and harassing his former girlfriend. Um, then in a hearing seeking release from prison, because like I said, they threw him in jail, said, you're gonna have to await trial. He goes before the judge, he's trying to get released. And he admits under oath to not only the crimes that he committed at the Capitol, but to another crime as well. He told the judge that in speaking with his public defender, because at first they gave him a public defender before they made the decision that I'm going to come to. Um, so he tells his public defender, hey, I have an idea. How about if I contact the judge at his house to try to get him disqualified from this case? <laughs> so his attorney freaked out, of course. His attorney warned him, no, that is illegal. You cannot do that. So he didn't do it. But he admitted under oath that he did something similar in another case. And he was successful. He was the defendant in that case and it worked. He got the judge replaced in that previous case. So needless to say, his January 6th judge decided, mm, yeah, no, I'm not gonna release you. <laughs> you need to remain in custody until trial. Um, and I should mention the judge in this case is Trump appointee, Trevor McFadden. So McFadden also, uh, you guys might not know this or you might if you've been watching the show for a while, he served on Trump's transition team when Trump took office in, 20, in 2017. So this guy is not a liberal by any stretch of the imagination. So Judge McFadden agreed to allow Fellows to represent himself in the case. He was reluctant, but he allowed it. Fellows told the judge, you know, don't worry, I'm using my time wisely while I'm in prison because I'm spending hours in the prison library reading legal books. So he believed he could do a better job than his licensed experienced attorney. I am not making that up. So I, I knew that this trial was gonna be very entertaining. I knew it was gonna be a shit show, but <laughs> this was even better than I imagined. Fellow's opening argument included his statement to the jury that January 6th was, quote, a beautiful day. <laughs> he also likened himself to Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Fellow said that, like Kavanaugh, he too was being falsely accused. And he advised the jury not to, quote, fall for the tricks of the prosecutors. He also told the jury, quote, I truly do like the fact that those senators and congressmen were in fear for their lives. So during cross-examination, Fellows was asked about um, sitting in Senator Merkley's chair, and he said, quote, I didn't know it was a senator's desk, but then he added, quote, it felt very comfy. Fellows also insisted that on January 6th, the mob, quote, had the right to overthrow the government. So Fellow's trial was coming to a close. 
This was on Tuesday of this week. Well, he got himself thrown in jail or sentenced to jail before the trial even ended. At one point, Judge McFadden explained to him, uh, and I don't know why, I didn't, couldn't find the reason why, but he explained to Fellows, you have forfeited your right to a rebuttal. And Fellows tells the judge, quote, I would expect nothing less from a kangaroo court. So Judge McVadden ordered that Fellows serve five months for contempt of court on top of whatever other sentence he's going to get, however long he's been in there, you know, what, two years now, more than two years. And in the judge's order about the contempt charge, McFadden noted that after he told Fellows that he was in contempt of court, Fellows said something about it being a Nazi court. So I think Judge McFadden had had enough of his insults in court filings throughout this whole thing. Fellows had called Judge McFadden corrupt and biased. And if there's one thing we've learned from Judge McFadden's uh, case with Pauline Bauer, McFadden does not like to have his authority questioned and challenged. So anyway, the five months will be on top of whatever sentence he receives in this January 6th case. I'm sure he's going to get credit, though, for the two plus years of time served. So the case went to the jury on Wednesday, and by Thursday afternoon, Fellows was found guilty on all counts. So it's obstructing an official proceeding, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, and parading or demonstrating in a capital. So Fellows now faces up to 20 years in prison, and the judge has scheduled his sentencing for November 29th. So let's go, Brandon to prison for decades, <laughs> right? Um, and something very telling happened during the, the jury's deliberation. The jury sent a note to the judge before they came to a final verdict saying, quote, we wanted to confirm that the defendant does not have any personal information on individual jurors since he was defending himself includes name, address, etc. So the judge replied with, quote, both parties are given limited biographical information on prospective jurors at the outset of the trial. The court collects those sheets from the parties at the conclusion of the trial. So, you know, they were obviously worried he might dox them or, you know, maybe even something worse. This is where we are. This is where we are with, you know, domestic terrorists. Um, So hopefully Fellows wasn't able to copy their information before that those sheets were collected. But um, I should also note Fellows was diagnosed according to him. And I believe the court has confirmed this. He was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a high functioning form of autism. And he has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. So I I do really wish there was something that could be done other than throwing him in general population in prison. I I don't think that's the the right place for him. Um, I understand there's only so much you can do once someone's an adult, but you know, he clearly needs help that he's not receiving. So I will keep you all posted. I will let you know when he is sentenced, of course. Um, Yeah, it was, it was pretty entertaining, I have to say. Yeah, he he gives good trial. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please donate if you possibly can. Links are down below in the description box on YouTube and on the podcast. Love you all. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.